tonight, which is sort of like a continuation from last from Sunday's sermon. But we're using a new subject tonight. Our subject for tonight is believing to live. Believing to live. Last Sunday we came out of the book of St. John, the letter of St. John, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 18. Tonight we're going to go through St. John, the 12th chapter, verses 19 through 50. We're going to be moving kind of swiftly. To today, what we call in America Ash Wednesday, around the world, people celebrate Ash Wednesday as a remembrance of what they did on Palm Sunday, um, during Jesus' triumphant entrance into the city. Ash Wednesday, they take the palm leaves, which they're supposed to take the palm leaves from last year and burn them, and that's when they put the ashes on your forehead. As when it's supposed to be a day of prayer and observing what Christ has done for, for humanity and our mortality. So we're supposed to be fasting and praying on Ash Wednesday. But if we can remember what Christ done for us and the sacrifices that he done for us. Not only today or last Sunday, which was Palm Sunday, but every day of our lives, but especially this week, yeah. uh, from, from Palm Sunday to Easter, mm -hmm. a lot went on in the life of Jesus mm -hmm. the Christ, mm -hmm. for he fulfilled the will of the Father, and we believe in, in Jesus the Christ to live. Come on. I hope that's what you believe in. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to deal with some of that because we all know that because Lazarus was raised from the dead and people were believing in Christ and the miracles that he had done and he had done great witness in the land and people had, uh, I'm talking about lay members, I'm talking about uh, big time people that was, that, was, that was in position in the Jewish faith had began to turn and follow Jesus. And for that cause that they were seeking to take his life. Uh, why? Because they really was believing in him. And if they believed in him so much that they would walk away from the faith that they had. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever been like that when you come into Christianity or you start really serving God and walking for God and living for God? All of a sudden your friends get upset. Amen. You think you're better than me? Mm -hmm. And they start thinking of devices to get you back. Invite you over when it's time to fight it. And you got to make a decision, right? Amen. Well, we're believing to live. We're not living to die, but we're believing in Christ to live on today. Uh, verses uh, 19 through 50 in St. John 12, it reads, And the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail not. Behold, the world is gone after him. Y'all see what's happening? That's what they say. Everybody follow that lunatic. They call him a heretic during the time. And everybody was following him. Why? Because they weren't doing nothing. When Jesus came on the scene, nobody had never seen nobody walk on the water, turn water to wine, raise the dead. Uh, he had done some significant things in the life of the Jews among uh, 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 during that time and in that, in that place. To the point to where people start challenging what they was following mm -hmm. and what they believe. Same thing going on now. Mm -hmm. We got new churches, new new belief trucks new coming up, and they and they criticize what old church done, and and and, and they, they they comedians they get on TV and they they laugh about it, and they they make skits about church and how they how we sing, how we pray, how we worship, and everybody laughs. Now realize you're laughing at yourself. Amen. And sooner or later, the new church is going to be treated the same way because of there's always something new coming up. We're going to be serving the same old God. <laughs> the same God. And so we have to be careful how we think about things. 
verse 20 says, And there was a certain Greek among them that came up to worship at the fast, at the feast. And the same came therefore to Philip, which were at Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, <coughs> we would see Jesus. Peter, Philip came, coming, and tell Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall unto the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So he was, in a, in a sense, letting them know that his time that he'd been teaching them about has come forth. This man ain't just want to see him. They want to know who he is. So they can do what? So some of them wanted to worship him. Some of them wanted to see him make miracles. But the ones, the rulers, want to see him die. Yeah. Want to get rid of him. It causes too much trouble. You know, sometimes when people in today's society change the narrative in politi political politics that just like they're going on now, uh -huh. seems like the narrative just keep changing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when the narrative changes so fast, we overlook a whole lot of things that were going on. Mm -hmm. Y'all know how it is if you go home and, and your life your life was on and food was ready when you got when you left home, you just can't wait to get there. Can't wait to go back. Everybody is taking all night long. <laughs> then you get back home, the lights off, and somebody gonna hit up all the food. Don't that make you mad <laughs> when they change the narrative? Uh, that, that's how it is in the spiritual realm. Sometimes the narrative gets changed. Sometimes God changes the narrative. Sometimes the devil changes the narrative. We always, as people, try to change the narrative. Today I was sitting back. I, I often share things about my grandchildren. I was sitting back and I was sitting in the bedroom and I was sitting there and had the TV on. And began to think about some things. I heard one of them crying. I went in the room and looked at it. He was crying. He looked and looked around and saw me and started laughing. Because <laughs> he was glad to see me. Y'all ever been like that when God showed up? Uh, just, just change your narrative. I just thought it was kind of funny, you know, at, at, at the first, you know, then I really realized he was hollering, he was hollering for somebody to come get him. And I changed his narrative. Like he was just happy to start kicking and happy just happy. Here we are, God changed our narrative every day. The devil has a plan for us. God comes in and changes the narrative. And we won't even smile. We won't kick. Come on. We won't holler, we won't, we won't laugh, we won't do nothing. We just keep it moving just like everything that's done. When God changed our narrative, <laughs> we need to let him know we're glad about it. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Jesus come here to die. And he knew the season had come for the time of his departure. And so what? God was changing the narrative of mankind by sending Jesus here. Y'all think about it. He was changing the narrative. Amen. Man had gotten so far, they won't listen to him no more. Right? Mm -hmm. So he sent his son here to die for our sin so that we won't be under and have people commanding us what to do with our spirituality. We don't have to shoot no doves and kill no goats now and put blood on the altar. Now, ain't y'all glad about that? Half y'all don't even eat goat no more. Amen. Glad. <laughs> Think about it. All we got to do is say, Lord, forgive us. Because of what Jesus done. I ain't got to go. I don't have to go by the rabbi. I don't have to go nowhere now. I go there if I want to. But I don't have to go there now. I can get it done at the house. I can get it done on the job. I can get it done at the car. Yeah. I can get it done in the hospital room all my day. Yeah. And get it done. Yeah. Because of what Jesus done for us. Yeah. Yeah. On this week yeah. that we celebrate. Yeah. Some people get hung up and say it won't, it won't, it won't do it this time. Mm -hmm. 
So what? This is the time we celebrate. Amen. Nothing like Christmas. You weren't born on Christmas Day, the 25th day of December. Of December. But that's when we celebrate. Amen. Don't get hung up on the logistics. <laughs> Everybody coming up with something new now. Everybody coming up with new revelations. New thought patterns about, oh, that ain't the truth. They got y'all believing in a lie. No, this is when we worship them. We can worship his birthday on any day of the year. Yeah. We don't have to go and get, if y'all want to now, I'll go get some palm leaves. Y'all come back and I can put it on before the end so you can remember it. But because we ain't did it, somebody think we're doing it wrong. And because if we do it, somebody think we're doing it wrong. Wrong. That's not a part of our, our, our faith. Mm -hmm. We believe that we can remember Jesus. We don't have to put the actions on. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have to do communion. He just, he just tells us to do it. As long as you yeah. come together, mm -hmm. you can do it at your supper table if you want to. Mm -hmm. Baptism, same thing. Mm -hmm. that it's all centered around what Jesus done for us. Yeah. Yeah. Washing up the feet. I wash your feet if you want me to. Come on. <laughs> it's nothing wrong with it. It's just showing humility. As Jesus showed humility. Because he washed his disciple feet. One of them said, I ain't worthy. Huh? I'm not going to let you wash my feet. They thought it was a joke. Jesus is not a joke. We, 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 everything that we do in the Christian church is supposed to be sent around Remembering what Christ and what God the Father did for us. Some people uh, detach themselves from certain things. Don't want to do certain things. That's fine. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But we do it a certain way over here. And they might do it a certain way over there. And somebody else might do it a certain way over there. But guess what? All of it is for the remembrance of Christ. It's not for just ritualistic fear. Mm -hmm. It's Easter time. We celebrate Easter because of the death, birth, and resurrection. We don't celebrate it because of the Easter egg and a little bunny hopping along, yeah. hopping down the bunny trail. Amen. We celebrate it, and sometimes we put candy and we hide it for the kids to find it. That's for the kids. They don't know. We give them something to do on Easter so they can remember why we worship on Easter. Amen. Somebody said, well, as a ritualistic, it's for the devil. Amen. Not in my mind. Right. Mm -hmm. huh? If people want to do it, they do it. If they don't, they don't. Amen. Amen. We got to remember the reason for the season Amen. is Jesus. Amen. The reason is not for us totally, but it's to allow the world to experience love Amen. that Jesus had Amen. given us. Now we know Easter, Christmas, and other religious occasions have been merchandised. Mm -hmm. People make money off of it. Churches make money off of it. Mm -hmm. um, the merchants make money off of it around the world. Sometimes they have Easter sales on for cars and clothes and things. And you go out there and look like that week and make a great deal. Mm -hmm. If you just wait for money to come on down to what you pay for it on Easter. Yeah. But <laughs> they use them days and because they know our mind is sinner and worshiping Christ and they know they try to hook us. That's what the devil do. But we got to keep our mind and our focus on Jesus the Christ. So Jesus let them know at this time, I don't know how you got way over there. <laughs> but Jesus is letting the man know here in verse 20, 19 and 20. Uh, letting them know that my time of my departure ain't going to be long. You know, unless, unless the seed die. Amen. He can't germinate. Amen. So he will let them know that he finna fall to the ground. Right. And when he germinate, he gonna germinate rebirth. And every in all of humanity. It's all it's up to them to accept it or not. Amen. But the birth is there. Mm -hmm. Y'all y'all plant gardens and, 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 and with, with seeds? Amen. Some Amen. some people now they grow the plant, they go to the road, they go to different places, they buy a whole plant, put it in the ground. But it's something different when you plant it from the seed yeah. and you see it sprout up and you see it grow. Uh -huh. But do you not know that seed has to die? Yeah. It has to, it has to go, to, go 
go through certain photosynthesis, certain procedures that have to germinate, it has to rot. Yeah. But in the midst of that, I see another something, new life comes up, up out of that death. That's what we come at. With our lives, our spiritual lives came up out of the death of Jesus the Christ. So every time he used the corn yeah. as a symbolic, so every time we go get a stalk of corn, you be eating from the seed. Amen. Uh -huh. That was planned. Uh -huh. Recognize every time you come to church, you eat from the seed. Mm -hmm. That was planned mm -hmm. by Jesus the Christ 2,000 2, years ago. Over 2,000 years ago. They, they tried to kill the message. They couldn't even they couldn't even succeed at that. He couldn't. He wouldn't stay there. <laughs> <Amen. First. laughs> down, down in verse 25, it says, He that loved his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in the world shall keep it unto eternal life. As we get older, get older we begin to start seeing life for what it is. Life becomes a strain. We have to do as, as somebody sung the night, press our way. Yeah. I feel like pressing my way on. Life sometimes gets like that and we be ready to go home. But it ain't our time. Right. We have to keep on living. Right. Lee Williams sung the song, can't run, can't hide. Amen. When the devil ain't to come, he come to get you. When your time is up, ain't nothing you can say. Ain't, ain't no money you can give. All right. Ain't no prayers you can give. When your time to go, it's time to go. Yeah. But as long as we hear the man of the living, you have to keep pressing. Yeah. It ain't going to be easy. All right. It ain't easy for the new young sprout to come up out of the ground. Uh -huh. Most majority of the time, we, we plant seed. We plant it maybe two inches or an inch and a half down in the dirt. It's covered. And it begins the process yeah. of growing. It, it, it already has to go through the process of dying. Now it has to begin the process of growing. And then that long, young sprout, as it grows, it pushes its way up out of the dirt. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's pressing. Yeah. It's on the upper way. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. New heights is gaining. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. Every day. It's steadily growing. God still watering. Yeah, we are steadily growing. New heights yeah, that we are gaining. As we die, new heights and new seeds come up out of our lives. Yeah. As we're gaining. How many of you remember your loved one? There are a lot of them going on now. Amen. But they drop seeds in your life. Yeah. And you remember that. And some of the times we sit around and we think about our loved ones, how they've gone on, and I get a little tickled sometimes at some of them. You know, I think about the good times and the little joke they told or something funny that they did in life. And, you know, it, it, at first I'd be sad, and then all of a sudden I think about that, that one song, happened, and it comes to mind and it just makes me laugh. Right. And then I said, I miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Then I got to move on. Because uh, the young sapling, it don't sit there and concentrate on the seed. It has to continue to push its way up out the dirt. Uh, if it concentrate on the seed, that means it ain't going to never sprout out the dirt. We do too much concentrating on what we ain't got in the dirt. Instead of growing in the Lord. And allowing God to water our life and give us the sunlight that we need so we can go through the photosynthesis process of, of getting the Holy Spirit in our lives and, and He cleaning us up, getting us ready for the yeah. eternal yeah. glory right. so we can get ready for to receive our crown of glory. Uh -huh. right. But we too worried about what's going on now. Yeah. You'll see it. Jesus will right. talk about it in a minute. He says, if any man he said, he that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hated his life uh, in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall 
also my servants be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Um, you ever thought about that when you're serving Christ? You're honoring the, what the father done, and the father going to honor you for serving and following his son? Amen. We don't have time to worry about what folks talking about Jesus name. Somebody stole his body, all that old stuff. It is my belief he going back to glory. Hmm? I don't have time to sit around and speculate. I won't there. I'm going by faith. Amen. Amen. Up there. Amen. Somebody talks to me when they call me Amen. to preach the gospel. Somebody called me. Amen. At least I'm crazy. Right. I'm hearing voices. Somebody talked to me when he sent me. Amen. Uh, somebody opened some doors up for me in my life. Amen. Um, Amen. So I've been dealing with somebody. I believe it's Jesus. Amen. I believe it's God the Father. I believe it's the Holy Spirit that I've been dealing with in my life. You might not believe it, but that's your belief structure. But I believe it. So I don't have time to sit around and argue with folks that don't believe, that have no faith. I tell them where I stand. Some of them I don't even tell them. Let's talk about the ball game. Let's talk about fishing or something else. We ain't got to talk about religion. Because I know what you believe, you know what I believe. Ain't no need. We ain't getting nowhere that way. So, then he says, Now, now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I to this hour. Uh-huh. See, he knew what time it was. He knew why the man wanted to see him. He knew why they were searching for him. Everybody wasn't looking for the miracles. Everybody in church ain't looking for the miracles. They're not looking for the blessing. They're just here for various reasons. And then he said in verse 28, Father, glorify thy name. Then came, y'all got to read it. Y'all got to really pay attention to this right here. He know what time it is, right? So he giving honor to, to, to the Father, letting them know that he come because the Father had sent him, right? right? Then he said, Father, glorify that name. Then came a voice from heaven. Y'all see it? Mm -hmm. Saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Now y'all y'all really listen to that today prayer now. It said, the people therefore that stood by and heard you see, they, they heard, mm -hmm. but they ain't heard, all of them ain't hearing the same thing. Mm -hmm. huh? It said that it thundered. Mm -hmm. Others said an angel spanked to him. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. See, the one was there for the miracles. The one was there because of who he was and was really truly following him. They heard something different. They heard somebody speaking. Everybody else heard it thunder. Amen. They couldn't get nothing from it. It was a different language. So when things happen to you in your life, it's a different language. Somebody said he's gonna die, she's gonna die, she ain't gonna make it out. Somebody else saying they're gonna leave God just right around the corner. They're gonna make it out. So when I was reading this, I was studying this, I got kind of excited about it. So that let me know everybody ain't hearing the same thing. Right. Some people think I'm crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Spend your time at that church. Yeah. You ought to be out there having a good time, man. That ain't what I heard. Yeah. Y'all heard me Sunday. I said, have y'all heard? <laughs> then Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me because of your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out because the plan of salvation is on the way. Yeah. See, he knew what time it was. I'm getting ready to die. I'm getting ready to be the sacrifice. They think they're killing me, but I'm laying my life down. Now, in verse 32, it says, and if I be lifted up from the earth, what? Now you always ask that question. 
I've always asked that question. Uh, a lot of people always ask that question. If Jesus is so real, why, why is everybody trying to pull it down? Why is everybody trying to go another way? Because the enemy, the prince of this world, he's been, he's been casted out. He don't have no power over you. All right. But he knows that if he can deter you from looking at Jesus and believing in Jesus and putting your faith in Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, then you won't be lifted up from the earth. Paul said the dead in Christ shall be right. Yeah. Then those that are living shall be what? Caught up. Yeah. You ain't going nowhere if you don't have Christ for, there first. Yeah. Let me help you with something. I'm a shepherd. Call a shepherd. Okay. Pastor. All of you are shepherds. There's somebody under you. Your children, your grandchildren, somebody's under you that you have shepherded, you have fed, you have looked out for, you have taken care of. That's what the shepherd's job is. Right. Come on. Come on. You are not the architect. You are the shepherd okay. of your flocks. Amen. You didn't create your flock. You might have thought you did. Well, God is the architect. Yeah. You, you're there to be the shepherd. To guide the sheep, to guide your people and your household, or whoever God has put you over. You are not the architect. God is the architect. He's the creator of life. If it's something or people are doing things that are not according to what the what you as the shepherd want, it's not your fault. If people die and go to hell, it's not your fault. That's between them and the architect, the father. Y'all ain't here. Right. So quit letting folks tell you it's your fault. Your children don't act right. The world is going to hell in a handbasket, and it's the church's fault because they ain't working hard enough. No, no, no. We just the, we just the shepherds. We are not the architect. That's between God and the devil. What's going on in the world? Because they were here before I was. So he made me responsible for different various jobs that while I'm here living as far as being a pastor, a dad, a granddad, a husband, and a wife. And I try to do my job to the best of my ability. But, but because people want, people have their own mindset, they do what they want to do. They hear what they want to hear. Yeah, How many times I can't tell you my children say I said or done certain things when they were growing up. And I'm like, I ain't never did that. That night, living in my eye. Or he's on the losing mind one. <laughs> but they heard the thunder. They didn't hear the voice. Yeah. <laughs> so don't let people put that guilt trip on you. You got to know that you believe in to live. And as you believe in to live, you're going to make some mistakes in life. Yeah. And it's not always your fault. The way your children come out. Mm -hmm. uh, the way your life come out. It's not always your fault. Amen. The devil has some involvement in there somewhere. Amen. God has some involvement in there somewhere. Amen. Because sometimes we fight against our destiny of what we're supposed to do. Right. Sometimes our job is finished and God bless us with a long life. Amen. That was for somebody. I don't know who. Amen. And then verse 39, uh, verse 38, he says, I'm sorry, verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed what? Not. That's why the ones that come out short to me. I ain't never seen nobody get healed. I ain't never seen. I ain't, if God was to do it through somebody, you still wouldn't believe it. You would think it was a trick. Amen. And then it says, They that said of Elijah the prophet might be fulfilled. Which he has spoke, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe because Elijah said again in his prophecy. Elijah. And he said, he has blinded eyes. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, 
and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Elijah, and when he saw that his glory and spake of him, nevertheless among the chief rulers and many of the, and many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of synagogue. They saw the miracles and they still didn't believe. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So God, in one place in the New Testament, it said God would send them strong delusion that they were able to believe a lie than the truth. And I tell you, that's what's going on now. People do not believe in God no more. Amen. They believe more in themselves than they ever will in our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. When I'm reading that verse, I'm I'm saying to myself that, or I'm, I'm getting an interpretation that the Pharisees they wanted to believe on Jesus, but they was wanted to hold on to their position, right, in the church, right. So they rather hold on to a position, right, for thinking they were than to really believe in. You got to be strong to follow Christ. Yes. See, you know, man know that Christ when He's working in their life. But you got to be strong. You ever work these jobs? Even in church house, folks, folks put, put things on you. They'll tell you, if you don't preach like this, you won't have a job come next Sunday. We'll get you up out of here. And they'll call the sheriff on you. You got to be strong and preach it anyway because they didn't call you. Because some people just ain't going to believe. Ask Cora in the Old Testament. When they told him, said, choose him, choose whom you shall follow this day. Those that don't believe that want to follow up, you stand over here. Big earthquake came, swallow them up. Huh? We, 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 we got to know that some people ain't going to believe. They write in the church out. They just not going to believe it. And you got to be strong enough to stand and do what God has told you to do. You got to know that so many people running to be preachers, so many people running to be bishops and pastors, so many people running to the front line not knowing that an effective preacher, an effective soldier in, the, in, in God's army going to die. They die soon. Look at it all over the Bible. None of the disciples except one that was John had his eyes put out and put on the island somewhere when he wrote Revelation. Mm -hmm. Think about it. The rest of them died. Yeah, they ain't just that old age neither. They were killed. Yeah, Effective preaching will kill you. Mm. <laughs> It'll make people kill you. Because you reveal the evilness inside of them. Yeah, huh? You tell them they got to do right when they don't want to do right. You tell them to shut up when they want to talk and they want to fight. Most priests had, 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 had swords on them. That would kill you. Go read the Old Testament. You got to be, you got to be strong to carry the word of God. You can't be weak. They get you. They, they come at you. Come at you hard. I know. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I didn't hear it. They come at you hard. And you still got to stand there and preach the way God has given it to you. You still got to live your life the way God has given. So many times I heard my children say, well, well John, them, they mom and daddy, they, they let them do, well, I, ain't, I ain't John mom and daddy. I'm John and Jane and Brittany mom and daddy. You're going to do it the way I see it. Wait, 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 you got the pastor and different ones over there in the church, they said, I ain't over there. We at 507. You, you got to be strong when brothers and sisters come and engage you because you're following Christ and doing what Christ said to you. You got to be strong to do. You got to make sure that Christ is leading you to do what you do. And if he's leading you to do what you do and you are effective, then the devil come and try to pull the rug out of the money. When he pull the rug out there, I don't need no rug. I stand on the ground. Huh? That's what you're going to have to do. Yeah, stand on the ground. Yeah, keep on moving. Because God got a job for you. That's what somebody I got to move on. 
<laughs> and then he said, 43rd verse, he says, for they love, uh -oh, they love the praise of men, right? More than the praise of, of God. Jesus cried and said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that, what, sent me. He's talking about the Father. He letting them know. And he said, and he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Because I'm doing just what he told me to do. Huh? I'm his spokesman. Huh? You know, God spoke, spoke in this instance. In the scriptures right here, he spoke and he said he will glorify it, and he's going to continue to glorify his name. Huh? He spoke, right? Amen. So, you, 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 you got to know that God is real and following Christ, you following God. You're following the Father when you follow Christ. If you don't follow Christ, I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're a Jew, a Hindu, what Israelite? If you ain't got Christ in your son, right. and that's who you follow, the teachings of Christ, then you ain't gonna make it to the Father. Right. Right. Now somebody done got upset now. Come on. <laughs> Good luck, I believe in Jesus the Christ. Yeah. I ain't gonna debate it with nobody. Mm -hmm. I can't prove it to you. It's only by my faith. Yeah. You can't see it. But you can see it in my life, but it's only by my faith. So quit trying to prove it to folks. Only thing you can do is live for folks. Amen. Continue to do what God tells you to do and keep it moving. Some will believe it, some won't. Amen. When we drop seed, we drop sad to seed, we go out there, we till the ground up, the ground up so you ain't got to make no mounds for salad, for, 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 for turnip greens and muscle greens, and you ain't got to make no mound for them. You just chill the ground up, and you go out there and you throw some seeds on the ground. Mm -hmm. Some seeds come up, sometimes it be a, a bunch of greens all the way around. All of a sudden, you see this big bell spot. You know you put some seeds right there. Exactly. It just wouldn't come up. Right. For whatever reason, and then all of a sudden, during the summertime, mm -hmm. <laughs> next year, it curls up right there. You thought it was dead because it was bad, but it still germinated somehow or another and come back up. <laughs> Where we at now? Uh -oh. Verse 46. I am come the light into the I am come a light into the world. That whosoever believe on me should what? Did he say you couldn't walk in darkness? He said you shouldn't abide in darkness. That means you got to come out. If you find yourself in darkness, you come out. Come back to the light. Amen. And if any man hear, the, hear my words and believe it not, I judge him not. You see that? He said, for I came not to what? Huh? But to what? So he didn't come to judge the world. He didn't condemn nobody. Huh? Then he says here, in the 48th verse, he said, He that rejected me and received not my words has one that judged him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall be judged him in the last day. So you got to leave it to the individual. For I have not spoken of myself, but of my father. Which sent me. He that gave he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Who shall ever whatsoever I speak it therefore, even as the Father says unto me, so I speak. So we don't have to judge folks for what they're doing. They've already been judged. Right. If they don't accept Christ and his word through what the Father has sent Christ, he's saying that the Father is speaking through him. He's speaking not of himself, but he's speaking what the Father has already put inside of him. So, so, so judgment has already fallen on the world, not because he has judged them, but because they are wicked. Right. 
and they won't follow and they won't believe because they love praise and they love their position more than they love God. Don't love your position more than you love God in the church, in the world, or in your home settings. Keep God first. It's hard, but it's a, it's a must. And you, that's why we have to repent of those sins that we know are commission and omission. Every day we have to repent because sometimes we do and say things we don't know what we say. You remember Jesus said, I know Easter something coming. I, I got one. And coming, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. Um, forgive them. They didn't know they was killing the son of God. Well, actually, they thought they was killing him, but they didn't know he come. Jesus was a plan. Jesus, Jesus came to sacrifice his sin. Jesus came and got in the dirt to die so that we might have the right to eternal life. Huh? Think about it. It's time to eat now. Think about it. If God has been planning, now it's time to plug it up to eat. Huh? We can have a good time down here in our life if we just continue to watch and follow Jesus the Christ. But leading to lead. Huh? But leading to lead. Now I'm going to share this with you, then I'm going to ask you to stay. Sometimes in life, you just want some peace. You say, all I want is some peace. And you need peace and quiet sometimes. Sometimes you just want peace from the job or peace for whatever situation is going on. Maybe you're sick of your body or maybe the devil is troubling your mind or something. But you say, all I want is some peace. Things will be better if I can just find some peace. Believing to leave. That's your peace. Believing in Jesus Christ and he'll give you everlasting life. If you don't believe, Trouble gonna be here for a lifetime. Then you're gonna die. Then you're gonna really see what trouble is. <laughs> so you got to believe to live. When I say believe to live, you can live some here, you can believe here, and you live in some here, but I'm really talking about the eternal kingdom. We, we, we believe it to live in the eternal kingdom. The glory that God has assigned for us. Wherever he is, we're going to be there too. And he said he's going to be in the midst of us. And we won't have to worry about nothing. Huh? I believe that. I believe what the word says. I believe what the word says. Come on and stand. Truly, Lord, we're believing to live. Looking for that life to turn. That life, Lord, that you will be in the midst of us and all things will be made known. Yeah, yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord, because of your glory shine upon us to see another day. Yeah. Father, we ask the Lord that there be any sick, Lord, amongst us. Yeah. Any kindred, Lord, that is sick. Yeah. Those that are in the hospital rooms, in the convalescent homes. Yeah. Yeah. Father, somebody's trouble in their mind tonight. We ask the Lord that you will go by there, Lord. Amen. Father, somebody need a financial blessing on tonight. Father, we ask the Lord that you will grant it, Lord. Amen. Not that we can show power, Lord, but your power might be shown through us, Lord. Amen. Father, we ask the Lord a special blessing, Lord, over those, Lord, that have lost their loved ones Amen. on this week, Lord. Amen. Continue, Lord, to nurture them, Lord. Amen. Continue, Lord, to let them know, Lord, that you are not. Father, as we get on the dangerous highways, Lord, we ask the Lord that your spirit will go with us, Lord. Yeah. Leading God us, Lord. Yeah. In Jesus' name, we will forever praise your name yeah. for what you have already done uh -huh. and for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 I bless y'all.